Good evening, everyone. I am honoured to be part of this important event. This memorial service to mark the 240 plus women who have died in Ireland between 1995 and November 2021 and whose names in the years they died and who heard being called out in such a moving and marvellous way. Women who lost their lives and had their right to life taken from them by male violence in the past 26 years. I feel sure that the spirit and the presence and the love of all the women here tonight and around the world in this day marking this day for the um, action against gender violence. I feel sure that it has reached their spirit in whatever way it may be and that it will hopefully give them some consolation and that they may be able to rest in peace and light and that our love will be of help and that it will go out into the world so that things will be better for women in the future. It gives me great pleasure to be here in solidarity with women and men worldwide, to be part of an act of global action and resistance as we participate in this United Nations 16 days of global action against gender-based violence. It is great to be here to pay tribute to all the women, all the people involved in organizing this wonderful occasion. The wonderful Rita Fagan from the Resource Centre community, Annie Fletcher of Emma, the speaker, Commissioner Sinead Gibney, and all the artists contributing in their so many lovely ways, and particularly all of the representatives of those great organisations who are in the front line of supporting the victims of gender violence. It was wonderful to see all coming forward. Their names are so familiar and such wonderful work they do. Uh, the violence against women, it's one of the most persistent and devastating human rights violations in our world today. Kofi Annan of the United Nations said, violence against women and girls is a problem of pandemic proportions. At least one out of every three women around the world has been beaten, coerced into sick sex, or otherwise abused in her lifetime, with the abuser usually somebody known to her. Indeed, one of the most common forms of violence against women is domestic violence, internationally. And here in Ireland, one in four women have been abused by a current or former partner. This is a frightening statistic and one which reminds us that even as we gather here today, many women around the country and around the world are trapped in vicious relationships, relationships they entered into with love and hope, but relationships in which they have been maliciously deceived and betrayed by violent and manipulative partners. A quarter of women have had their lives impoverished by violent, uh, uh, violence and abuse. And it is intolerable that one in four women have lived in homes defined by terror, cruelty and bullying. It's so heartbreaking to know that domestic violence that was sadly common in Ireland has now increased and deepened appallingly amidst the COVID-19 crisis. Calls to guard the increased by 20%, criminal charges linked to breaches of order increased by 24% to more than 4,000. And there were more than 7,600 criminal charges for crimes involving domestic abuse. That's up a quarter from 2019. It is a cause for grief. 
But it is also true that we can be so grateful to all the people for their courage in taking action to deal with the situation as best they can. The brave women who ring the Gardaí are a family member, the health service are the health organisations to look for help. The brave people on the front line who respond and also those who realise that help is needed and have the moral courage to intervene. Unfortunately, the amount of resources needed to respond to call for help are not available and the suffering goes on. The health services and essential services, such as many domestic violence shelters and helplines, they are past reaching capacity. We need to prioritise dealing with violence against women and provide the extra services and resources to respond at every level. We need to provide adequate funding, funding to organisations supporting women victims of domestic violence. It is clear that urgent action needs to be focused on the problem of gender violence. How can it be that children on whom love and care and kindness has been lavished and very most, mostly by women in their lives that they can grow up to be a person of ignorance and cruelty. People who violate their own human dignity by violating the dignity of another. And what can be done? One thing perhaps, per particular educational opportunities could be of help. Educating against violence in general and gender-based violence to in particular could start at the very earliest age. We could instill in children and in young adults such an awareness of their own dignity and self-worth so that they could become conscious of their own authenticity and be able to understand and cope with their personalities, develop good character and make a commitment to ethical behaviour and never resort to violence on another person. I think that if yoga were taught and practised in all our primary and secondary schools on a daily basis, it would develop and maintain a healthy body and healthy breathing and thus enable self-control and management of anger and frustration so that instead of striking out, one might be able to take the time to think and make a positive response. I think that education as well as family influence can help in building in children a consciousness of the human dignity and the respect that is due to them and is due by them to every other person. It can give them an awareness of their right not to be bullied or insulted, a conf confidence as to what to do and how to speak up and ask for help if they or others are being bullied or belittled. Parents and teachers need to be helped to be aware of when their help is needed and to know how to give that help. The problem is huge and needs to be addressed in so many ways and from so many angles if violence is to be greatly reduced. It is clear that urgent action needs to be focused on the problem of gender violence. Today we not only remember those lost lives but to uh, resolve to honour them by committing to walk in solidarity with those who are abused. The fact that so many people, and it's a testimony here tonight, are aware of the issue. And around the world, uh, they're working towards the achievement of the third and fifth sustainable development goals, which are so important for women. The third is for good health and well-being and the fifth is gender equality. And I think 
And I feel sure that in time that they will bring good results. So for now, thank you all and all people around the world. And thank you very much and lots of love.